welcome to edupediaworld.com and thanks for watching edupedia world videos this is vikas patil this is the 10th chapter of grade 9 weathering this is the session of the chapter in this session we are going to learn in detail about different types of weathering we are going to try and achieve the following objectives describe different ways in which physical weathering may happen describe various ways in which chemical weathering may happen describe the role of plants and animals in the process of weathering of rocks compare areas that experience weathering of different types illustrate different types of weathering with the help of diagrams before we begin our exploration about types of weathering let us look at some of the common misconception that exist regarding the same first all the rocks undergo the same type of weathering second rain water is too weak to cause any harm to the rocks third all the places with snow will experience frost wedging last exfoliation happens in all hot places well all these are myths misconceptions let us explore the facts weathering in simple words weathering is the in situ breakup of rocks broken rock fragments lie on or around the rock unless they are disturbed weathering is a static process the agents of weathering are in atmosphere which are temperature change moisture frost etc types of weathering weathering can happen in three different ways first physical weathering this is the disintegration of rocks by agents like temperature moisture or frost and pressure second is the chemical weathering where decomposition of bed rocks by altering or dissolving the component of rock minerals third is biological weathering where living organisms like plant and burrowing animals are involved often biological weathering is put under the category of physical weathering physical weathering is a is the breaking up of rocks to physical process here the broken pieces of rocks are similar to the parent rock in chemical composition physical weathering may happen through exfoliation frost weathering pressure release wetting and drying by burrowing animals and by plants exfoliation in hot and dry regions having a very high daily range of temperature massive rocks like granite are exposed to the surface of the earth separate in thin concentric successive shells the thickness of individual shell or plate may be a few millimeters this process in which rock seems to shed their skin is called exfoliation in the day a thin upper layer of the rock gets heated up and expands causing the formation of cracks parallel to the surface which are called tangential cracks in the night the heated up layer cools down and contracts the contraction causes the tangential cracks to expand 
and the formation of new vertical cracks thus resulting in the separation of the thin layer and exposing the rock to further insulation weathering exfoliation is also known as onion peeling as it is similar to the peeling off of layers of onion one by one frost weathering water confined in the cracks of rocks freezes and turns to ice thus expanding by about 9% This is known as the anomalous expansion. Such an expansion forces the cracks apart. When the ice melts, the water seeps down further into the cracks. Repeated cycle of freeze thaw cause fragments to break away from the parent rock. It is important that that ice in the rocks melts and freezes again due to this reason the process is not effective where conditions remain below freezing for long periods such as in polar regions but it is important in climates such as that of low latitudes and high altitude areas such as himalayas where the temperature hovers around the melting point of ice wetting and drying this is peculiar with uh, clay minerals that have layered structure and the bonding between the layers is very weak here water may enter between the layers and the clay swells when the water dries up cracks are left behind and the clay becomes loose this results into the rock getting disintegrated into pieces pressure release rocks at a depth are subjected to pressure of the overlying rocks and thus they tend to accumulate in a space as minimum as possible when overlying rocks are eroded usually due to a landslide or glacier the release of pressure allows the newly exposed rock to expand leading to the formation of fractures parallel to the surface plants when the plants are young their roots barely penetrate through the soil but as these plants grow into trees their roots become stronger and stronger and penetrate through the underlying rock and break it apart extensive burrowing by rodents may loosen the soil which may be easily eroded exposing the underlying rock to further weathering furthermore these burrows may be filled with water during the rain causing the overlying rocks to collapse chemical weathering chemical weathering is the breaking up of rocks by chemical means here the broken pieces of rocks differs in composition from the parent rock chemical weathering is common in the rocks which contain weak minerals such as salts which easily dissolve in water and are washed away this makes the rock weak cause its disintegration the agents of chemical weathering are water oxygen carbon dioxide from living organisms and of course acid rain chemical weathering can happen in the following four different ways first solution the homogeneous mixing up of a solute in a solvent is called solution solution weathering occurs when soluble chemicals in rocks such as salts dissolve including common salt or halite sodium carbonate sodium sulfate 
magnesium sulfate, gypsum and sodium nitrate. These are usually washed away in rainwater and lost from the land via rivers. As a result, the rock becomes devoid of these minerals and ultimately collapses. Carbonation When rainwater mixes up with atmospheric carbon dioxide, a weak carbonic acid is formed. This carbonic acid can react with rocks in which calcite is in good quantity. These rocks are limestone and marble. The action of carbonic acid forms a loose calcium hydroxide or it can result in the formation of a network of underground caves and channels called casts. Cast topography is a typical landscape in the rainy regions where there is limestone near the surface. It is characterized by caves in cold and disappearing streams. There could be an extensive network of underground caves which may result into the above surface of rock collapsing. Hydrolysis Hydrolysis is a process in which a water molecule breaks down into ions in the presence of another substance. Hydrolysis is an important process that leads to the formation of clays. Hydrogen ions derived from water react with aluminium silicate minerals forming insoluble clay particles clays, particularly in temperate climates. In tropical climates, bauxite may be formed. Some minerals are particularly susceptible to this process. For example, feldspar, which are common in igneous rock such as granite. As a result, the rock can become weak and eventually disintegrate. Oxidation is another way in which chemical weathering takes place. Oxidation occurs when rocks containing sulphide minerals are exposed to oxygen present in the air. Such iron, since iron is very common in nature, oxidation in iron can be easily noticed. Iron can be changed from the ferrous to the ferric state by the addition of oxygen. The iron changes to a reddish color and becomes powdery and more easily eroded. Living organisms like lichens can grow on cracks and produce weak acids that, that weather chemically weak, weak rock. The modern day pollution has resulted into acid rain. Compounds from burning coal, oil and gas react chemically with water forming acids. Such acid rain causes very rapid chemical weathering on the rocks. This was all for this session. In the next session, we will look at soil formation and mass wasting. Don't forget to watch. Thank you.